I think it's a plan B kind of day. Now that I'm all sexied up, time to get to work. Sixteen inches. It's unusual for out here. I just can't talk today. Holy cow. All right, so I got plan B out of the way, snow is removed. I can actually make it out of my driveway. Unfortunately, where I like to go and shoot, I could not make it to. So yeah, it's a day of science instead of more science. I was gonna, I was actually gonna test that four and a quarter prodigy. Uh, the plan was to go out and uh, buy all the hollow points that I had shot the last go around and go ahead and retest to see if all the, uh, fixes and upgrades that I did uh, were actually worthwhile. But uh, that is not the plan for today. So plan C is more science and this kind of relates back to a uh, build that I'm planning on doing. And it's an AR-15 build. And it's gonna be centered around a Criterion Core Series barrel that I ordered back in December. And I unfortunately have to wait three to five months to get it. So in the meantime, I've been thinking about actually how I am going to build this and some of the different things. Uh, and I started thinking about uh, bedding the barrels because I've seen videos of people bedding bar barrels and how great they are. I've bedded barrels and, you know, just took it for granted, you know, that it's a great thing to do and you always want to do it, you know, if, if you want an accurate rifle. Well, I saw a video recently by Brownells these guys, they're the Smith Busters. And they were talking about barrel bedding and whether it is worthwhile or not. And it, it kind of left some questions in my mind that I didn't feel completely satisfied with. I, I think I got to work on proving it to myself. And I'm going to be doing that with this Palmetto State Armory Freedom Rifle Kit that I actually bought back in 2019. Uh, they had a, a deal going on and it, it was a stupid deal. I think they actually... <laughs> I, I think they actually put the wrong price on it because I ordered it and then like a couple hours later I'm like, you know what, that's too good of a price. It was $259. And it, it was a complete upper and lower parts kit, stock kit, etc. And so I went back a couple hours later to, you know, get some more because it's a good price. And, you know, the price had gone up dramatically. So, oh well, I should have struck when the iron was hot. But anyway, here's what we got. So, got a lower build kit, which I won't be using. <laughs> oh yeah, these were like 39 bucks at the time. Missed those days. All right, so here is the guy that we're going to be using. Yeah, kind of like the retro look, but unfortunately the retro look uh, is not going to work in this scenario because we need to isolate the barrel. So gonna be taking off the A2 front sight, the handguard, and gonna be free floating this. That way we can isolate the barrel and actually see if all the work that we're doing actually means anything. So let's go ahead and start stripping this thing down.
So these pins are tapered and that's why you want to make sure that you're hammering from the correct side, which this block tells you pins out, which is really nice. And you just kind of have to work these out until they start moving. But this little punch right here, since it has a taper on it, you can't drive them all the way out. So you got to kind of get it started and then switch to a different punch. And there we are. You can see that taper. Now the punch that I was using actually has a little concave section right here on the nose for it to help sit on that pin. That way it doesn't glance off as easily. So helps direct the force of your blow. Really handy punch to have if you're going to remove an A2 front sight. And the block. The block is pretty good. Brown Owls block. Got both of these at Brown Owls. Now if you're going to be torquing on your barrel, having one of these action rods is very useful. This fits right up into the uh, barrel nut and grabs onto the barrel. So that way, whatever force that you're putting on it does not transfer to the receiver itself, which uh, you could cause it, depending on how much force you're putting into, to kind of bend and do things that you don't want to do. So keep your receiver true. Use one of these. I think I got this from Brown Owls. All right, this just slips right on. As you can see, locks right into that extension there. Now I need to remove the flash hider. And for that, I'll use this armorer's tool, which I had to modify at one point because it was too thick. You know what I need? Where's my rubber mount? You see, some people don't even bother with removing these. They just cut off the top of the post and run it as a low profile. But I was thinking about putting this back on, so it's worth the effort. How about a little more leverage? There we go. That's what she needed. So the nice thing about these type of tools is that they have access, so that way you could put a breaker bar on it and then a small pipe gives you just a little bit more leverage on it to really bust that loose. A little bit of play. A surprisingly tight slip fit. I was honestly expecting worse. I like being pleasantly surprised. Okay, so we're ready to start putting things back together. For the rail, I'm gonna use an old Midwest industry slimline that I took off a build uh, years ago when I changed rails, but I, I don't throw much away just in case, and uh, this is why you should hold on to parts. I mean, especially if it's perfectly uh, functional. So I'm going to go ahead and start with 
putting the barrel nut on and I'm going to use a little bit of copper anti-seize because it's what I have. And I'm going to shoot for about a torque rating of about 32, which might get us pretty close. Okay, so I had to make an executive decision on the torque rating um, to get this look. Okay, basically my pride was coming into it. Um, but how this was designed is that it has these two locating tabs here that locate into these notches on the barrel nut. Well, at 30 pounds, it is just slightly clocked to the left. And it's not a big deal or anything. It's more of an aesthetic issue. But if I were to try to get to the next notch to get this to line up perfectly, I would exceed 80 pounds. But this is a test bed. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just going to use it for what it is. So let's put our gas block on. Gas block is a Seekins Precision that I had floating around. It is an adjustable gas block and it's actually a well-made gas block. So if you ever need a adjustable gas block, Seekins makes a nice one. And she is tight. There we go. And nice thing is, is I have a flat up here at the top of the gas block that I can use as a reference point to the upper receiver. So I'm just going to take a flat tool and get it kind of lined up. Now the other thing is, is since this is a test bed, I'm not using any Loctite on these, which normally I would. Actually what I would do is I would dimple the barrel and then Loctite, but I'm planning on having to take this off again, so I'm just trying to make my life a little easy. Rotate it here a little bit. Now whenever you're putting these screws on, you don't want to over tighten. Um, the new Midwest Industries rail that I have actually has a little metal insert that goes in between that keeps you from over crushing, which prevents you from damaging the rail. But you just want to get these tight and work both sides. And I think that is good. Just so you can see what I was talking about, just a little bit of misalignment. Okay, we're going to put the birdcage back on. And I'm just reusing the same crush washer. If this was a permanent build, I would use a brand new one. But we're just going to make this work. Need to go just a little bit more. Nice thing is it still has plenty of tension on it, so I think that should be pretty good. All I need to do is mount a scope and then get out and shoot this. So what I'm thinking is that I'll get it heated up and shoot a number of rounds through it and then let it cool off and then actually shoot some regular ball ammo and maybe like some 77 grain through it and put it on paper and see how it does and then after that go ahead and strip it apart and bed the barrel and maybe lap it lap the face of it just in case yeah let's lap the face lap the face of the receiver and then go ahead and bed it and then go out and get the barrel nice and hot and and then put some rounds down on paper Sounds good.